Hi everybody, Kyung here, and uh, it's Friday, hooray! Um, so it's time for the page by page project with Terry over at Sweet Pea Papers. Um, so each week we challenge each other with a prompt, and then we each do go th are going through um, making a signature page by page. And last week uh, we did a CD envelope, so th there there is that. And then um, I chose to do black and white. So we're going to do just black and white today. Um, and I decided I want to do some mixed media. So we're going to put this away um, for right now. And uh, I'm going to, I pulled a piece out of this. This is just mixed media um, paper, like a cheap mixed media paper pad. Um, I suppose I should measure this. Huh? I don't know what um, number we're on. Let's see, one, I think 10 maybe, two, three. Right, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yes, ten. So we're on page ten. Let's just mark our page smaller uh, than um, what is than the page you know it's going to go on. So we have a little bit of a border. Okay, and then we'll just cut this, and then we'll get right to work. So yeah, I chose black and white, so we're not going to use any other colors other than black and white. And I wanted to do some mixed media. It's been a while since I've done some mixed media. Um, I've been needing to do some mixed media. And I thought it would be really cool if she had like an art, you know, like an art mixed media page like in her journal. So since this is essentially what this has become is like a whole journal. I need to clean out like my paper pieces that are stuck in the... <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, so here's our piece. And uh, let's see, what do we want to do with it first? Well, first I have this, right? This is like a washi tape. And I thought this would be cool to put some down the side like that. Uh, so let's do that. We could ink underneath it and that might be cool. You might be able to see through it um, cool, but mm, maybe not. Maybe we will leave it. Let's just mark it. That's where we want to cut it. Should we use our cutter? Should we use the scissors? Where are my scissors? <laughs> okay. Come here, scissors. Cut it a little bit larger in case we cut it crooked, you know. You know how it is. So I don't, I'm thinking I don't want to cover the whole thing, right, with this. Just part of it. So. I wonder if my cutter will cut it. I bet it will. I mean, it's not like it has a new blade in it yet anyway. <laughs> I was actually, I was at the craft store and I was looking at blades and they didn't have one for this cutter. Can you believe it? Um, and, and then I remembered, oh yes, well I bought this cutter at Walmart. I think it's a Walmart brand cutter. So I went to Walmart and they didn't have any replacement blades. So I thought, well, I'll probably have to go online, order them online. Okay, let's grab my book. Is this like clear, clear? Oh, it is. Oh, let's, yeah, let's do a little tiny bit of inkage. Hmm? Let's ink it just a little bit. And uh, cause there's some white tags and that would be nice to be able to see. What am I doing? I should grab my brush, my brush. Let's see, is it this one? It is. Okay, so I'm going to use my brush. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to make it black in some areas. Kind of if I think where the white labels were. I suppose we can like even it out and do the rest of the page, put in some. The problem is, is you know, distress ink is water soluble. So if it's the first layer you put on, any wet you put on, it's going to 
you know, smudge and smear it. And that's fine, you know, we're, go we're pretty grungy. This journal's pretty grungy. It's going steampunky and everything. So I have two grungy projects going on, and I'll tell you, I'm already missing my flowers. I'm missing the flowers and the butterflies and the... So yes, in, um, in September, I think I'm going to start, once the train journal is done, I'm going to start uh, like um, a purple journal. A purple journal. I have stuff that um, I've been collecting. I have all the purple stuff, so I'm all ready, all ready for the purple journal. Okay. Let's place this down. Yeah, this is like a washi. I think I got this on Amazon. Gets an Amazon. Ooh, I like it. Look at that. That looks. That looks great. I don't know why I don't use this more often. This like washi tape. It's pretty cool. And I'm pretty sure because it's washi tape, you can like write on it and stuff. Like you could write in on the labels and stuff, which is really cool. Okay, so there's our first little piece. Our next thing we're going to do is I'm thinking, hmm, I want to put some texture on, but I want to do it negative, right? So should we paint it? Mm -hmm. I brought out some black paint, just regular black acrylic paint, just basic. And we'll grab this and perhaps our big brush. We'll play with our big brush. Um, let's grab some paint out of here. That big brush is not going to fit in that little tiny palette, is it? <laughs> I didn't think about that. That's funny. Um, okay. And do you think I brought a pot of water down? Can you believe that? I didn't even bring a pot of water down. What is wrong with me? I got all prepared and I was like, I have everything. And then I looked, do you think I brought a pot of water down? No. Do, am I prepared underneath? My <laughs> I'm like, let's just paint. Let's get the paint out. I get so excited about the paint. Okay. <laughs> let's put something down. underneath okay let's put some paint down some black paint and I'm just gonna go in and we can spray with a little bit of water if we want to like water water it down a little bit mm -hmm. it's a little thick so I'm making texture right I don't care. I don't care how soft or how pretty or whatever, how it looks. It's we're putting it on and that's done. And I'm not going to overwork it. I'm going to leave it like that. Um, and then I'm going to dry it. So it's going to be, I'm going to wait for it to dry. And then we'll, and, um, while I do that, I'll actually go grab a pot of water and rinse out my brushes and my palette. <laughs> and then we'll be back once it's dry. And we're back, dum -da dum and I have a pot of water, and I've cleaned my brushes, and <laughs> our thing is dry. So that's the only thing with mixed media. You kind of have to wait for things to dry. I do, I do have my heat gun though, which is amazing. I'm gonna grab my acrylic gesso. This is really cheap acrylic gesso, and I would not recommend it. Don't buy this stuff. It's not good. <laughs> Jania would concur. We were laughing about it because she had bought the same gesso. You know, because it's cheap and, you know, it's like, well, what am I ever going to really use gesso? And then when you really start using it, you're like, oh, I need better gesso than this. <laughs> it's not matte. It dries. It says bright white matte finish. Lie. It's a lie. It does not dry matte. However, you can mix them up with some cornstarch and it will mattify it for you. It will matte it. But I don't care. We're going to use it for this. Um... I'm going to put some like white gesso texture over this black. That's the plan. And I'm going to use the fancy paint knife that Tommy sent me. I'm so excited to use it. Um, <laughs> to be honest, I've never used a paint knife 
Can you believe that? I've never used like a proper paint knife. So this is my first time. Wish me luck. I hope I don't mess it up. <laughs> I assume you just what, scrape it, right? Ooh. Oh, that's so much easier than um, anything else I've ever used. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, that looks great. So I wonder, um, let me grab a baby wipe. Let's wipe this off. Okay, I'm gonna put some more in here, I think. Let's see. Let's just try to scrape it in there. This stencil I made. I made this stencil with my Cricut. What is it, my circuit, Cricut, circuit? The cutting machine, you know those cutting machines? Um, I actually, and I actually recently, actually, I actually recently bought a, um, some actual like Mylar stencil material and uh, it was Mr. F who had told me about it because I was like, what do you use to cut stencils out of? Because this was cut using like a projector sheet, right? And it works great. It's held up really well and I've used it a lot, right? And yet still we get weird marks. That's okay. Probably because it was wet because it was still wet. What can you do? It's fine. It looks it looks fine. I could put some here. Yeah, I think that's great. Just some white on the black, and now we're gonna wait for it to dry. So I'm gonna clean off my palette knife, and we're gonna wait for it to dry, and then we'll be right back. Okay, so I changed my mind, and I this is not dry yet. But I decided I wanted to put some white splatters on there, and um, but I don't want to use my uh, watercolor or my uh, my gouaches because they're water soluble. I'm going to use the acrylic because when the acrylic dries, I can wet it for the most part, and it won't it won't like fade or muck up or you know blend too much. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the white acrylic. This is the same as the black. It's just white but I'm gonna water it down a lot, right? So that we get like a good wash. We get like a good paint wash. So I'm gonna grab my spray bottle of water, right? And just really get it. We're just making like a wash, right? And we could put a little bit more paint in there, right? Cause the more pigment you get, cause if it dry, as it dries, it'll lighten depending on how much paint is in it. But we don't want it too thick, we want it watery. So yeah, watery. Okay, and then I'm gonna like splatter paint all, I wanna splatter white paint all on the, uh, all over the black, right? Because we need some contrast because I am gonna paint a black like tree on it. So let's grab my, br where's my brushes? Here they are, my good paint brushes. Grab this big, well, we'll grab the medium one. We'll grab the medium one. So, and I'll wet it real good and we'll get it all saturated with that white, right? So it's saturated nice and good. And then I'm gonna rain the white paint down on top of the, of the black. Okay, and we want quite a bit of it. And then what's nice about this is because it's acrylic based, this watered down white, um, when it dries, it will be there. It will not blend, theoretically. It shouldn't blend, like it shouldn't react to the water and then blend. I mean, I'm sure if you, you know, soaked it and you know, <laughs> I'm sure it would. And I don't know how the paint will dry on the, but acrylic does pretty good. Acrylic is pretty permanent. Um, it really does dry like nails, so which you kind of have to be careful about, especially with your brushes, right? Your brushes, always make sure to rinse out if you're using acrylic. Like rinse your brushes really well because otherwise they'll harden and it'll ruin them. Okay, so um, now we're gonna wait for this to dry and then we'll come back. Okay, so I think we're pretty much dry um, for the most part. <laughs> but uh, one thing I do wanna do is I wanna go through this and I want to find a person 
to go on there, right? Um, I would love to put a guy like under the tree or something because I'm going to put a tree. So let's look, shall we? Let's see if we can find this guy's cool. Hmm. <laughs> look at these. Look at these three. <laughs> I like her. And he is really cool with the bike. I'd hate to have to cut out his bike, though. The guy's on the river. It's a cool picture of a ship. A ship journal would be really cool. I'm really interested to see what Terry is going to do this week with, uh, with the black and white prompt. It'll be interesting to see. That's a cool picture of them drinking out of the water fountain. Hmm. That guy's big. He's pretty big, huh? <laughs> I mean, we'll find someone. He's too small. Looks like they were waiting for a wedding. That's a cool picture. This one too. I love books like this that have like old pictures, just tons of old pictures. That's a cool picture with the train. <laughs> I'll have to remember that. Here's another one. Look at that. 1927. Meets with Klamath Indians, Captain Sky and family. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> Very cool. Well, I'm thinking this guy, right? I don't know. I just like the way his face is kind of shadowed. We could use, we could do all three of them. These three. Let's see. Let's see how they would look. down here. I think they would look good. We just got to fussy cut them out. Where am I, where's my little fussy cut scissors? Okay. I'm not going to be perfect or particular about it. I'm just going to get them out of there. Careful, I don't want to cut his face off. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. That's not what we're going for. It's not Halloween yet. <laughs> I'm excited to do Halloween. I'm going to do a Halloween thing, I've decided. Make like a spooky gothic journal or something. I've always wanted to do a gothic journal. I've got stuff for it. So I've got like a ton of black lace. and I'd love to make like a pretty one. He's great. I love him. I love him. He's great. We'll cut, we'll cut his, what, daughters, perhaps? Is it daughters or, I don't know, back in that, those days, his wives, <laughs> I suppose. Oh, that was a common thing, right? Especially, I don't know, it would depend, you know, I don't know where the Mormons, right? like kind of traveled. I know that in Paint Your Wagon, that's like a kind of a big plot of the story, right? Is that she arrives in town with, she's like the second wife, right? 
and she's all miserable and everything and they don't have any women in town <laughs> they have no women <laughs> so they're like trying to like buy this woman you know and she's so offended but she ends up marrying one of the guys and then she ends up marrying two men right she means so because she's all like she convinces them right well if a man can have two wives <laughs> why can't a woman have two husbands <laughs> it's great funny stuff okay here we go we have these two and this guy let's just put them on there that's what I think let's you know we should ink I think around them a little bit with black it'll make them stand out a little bit but I mean they'll kind of blend into the background they don't right they're grayscale everything is black and white so but they're very cool we'll just ink them up a little bit around their corners um, I may I may even brush a little bit of gesso on there just again for some contrast I'll just stick my finger in there we'll just stick our finger in there <laughs> in the cookie jar you get caught with your hand in the cookie jar we're just gonna rub some wonder we don't really have any on the lid anymore let's just dot some around there now they'll look better perhaps maybe maybe not who knows <laughs> okay let's just glue them on there I'm not even gonna test I'm not even gonna look at it I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna mess with it we're just gonna stick this guy on there so I find mixed media is so much about just putting it on there you don't like it just keep going keep going and cover it up more and put more stuff on there right no I got some white gesso on his face can we deal with that? Can I? Can I? Yes. I got it fast enough. Right? Because I've got white. Let me wipe my fingers of this white gesso. So I'm not rubbing it all over my pictures. My finger, by the way, is good. It doesn't hurt at all. It's just very ugly. And so I'm saving you <laughs> having to look at it. It's very ugly. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't care because it's not, it's fine. It doesn't, it's, it's good. But so, okay, I'm thinking they're going to stand over here like that. Right. And we're going to wrinkle a little bit and all that stuff, but it's okay because when it's done and it's dry and we glue it down onto the page, it won't be, right? It will not be wrinkled anymore. I'm just going to try to press her down without messing all this up too much. Okay. There we go. So they're down. They're on there now. That's awesome. And what's cool about this shadow is that because I'm going to do a tree, it'll look like the tree is putting a shadow down onto him that's my theory and I'm, I'm sticking to it we're gonna see how it goes <laughs> so again uh, we have to wait for it to dry I suppose I could just go right into and paint I think I could go right in and start painting and I'm gonna start doing that right now um, I'm gonna use my black and we're gonna water it down a little bit uh, because it's very thick right just, just like acrylic paint straight out of the bottle is really is pretty thick and can be hard to work with um, depending on what you're doing you know I think it really depends on what you're doing so I'm gonna use just like my watercolor brush this is what a five and look I left it in the water at some point look and it started cracking don't leave your watercolor brushes in the water it's really bad I le I've learned this the hard way you, you always hear artists and like people say these things and you, do you think, you know, do people listen? No. <laughs> I don't listen. 
And then I'm like, oh, whatever. And I do it anyway. And then lo and behold, they were right and I was wrong. <laughs> That's why they're the experts. <laughs> and I am the young Padawan or whatever. Padawan, is that correct? <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna water this paint down a little bit. Just a little bit, right? So now it's more runny. It's much better, much better. I'm going to put the cap on a big black bottle of paint. All right, here we go. We're going to dive in. Oh my goodness. It's all, it's all, okay, just up like this. And I'm going to take it right off the page. It doesn't need to be perfect. One thing I love about painting trees is trees are not perfect. They're all squiggly, right? Look, they're all squiggly. Okay, we take one branch off like this. I'm not sure. How much? I don't know. This brush is a little thick <laughs> for this. I suppose we'll have thick branches, huh? Ah! Branches, branches, little V's. So yeah, I'm excited to see what Terry does with black and white. It will be interesting. I'll have to pop over when I'm done with this and see if she's, I'm terrible. You know, I always, I don't record until the day of many days. Um, I don't have like a lot going on in my life. <laughs> so there's not a lot to talk about. So sometimes you, I'm like, well, if I wait a couple days, <laughs> Oh, I'll have at least something to talk about. Um, there was a crazy amount of birds in the front yard this morning. It was like something out of Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds, and they were like blackbirds, right? They were like these little cackle birds. And um, yeah, and I was getting ready to come do this, and so it was inspiring me. You know, I'm I'm all inspired by Edgar Allan Poe or something today, because, <laughs> you know, Alfred Hitchcock and um, I've also been watching, you know, like horror movies and thriller movies. I've been on that recently. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, Sleepy Hollow. Yes, I have seen Sleepy Hollow. I love Sleepy Hollow. So I have two versions I used to watch, like, growing up. Um, one was the cartoon one, okay? So there was a cartoon one that was made maybe in, like, the 80s or something. And uh, it um, it was great. We used to rent it, <laughs> right? Back when renting movies was a thing. You'd go, we'd go on Friday. We'd go to the rental movie place, and we would rent. You could rent five five movies for five dollars for five days. Um, and we didn't do Blockbuster. We had like a local rental movie place that we would go to, and they had that deal. They were much cheaper than Blockbuster. Um, because you could get it for a whole five days. I mean, of course, they also didn't have the titles Blockbuster had either, right? Blockbuster had, like, the big titles. You know, you could go get rent new movies, video games, all that kind of stuff. And our little local one didn't really have that. But, yeah, so there was that one. And then in the 90s, right, the one with Christina Ricci and... Uh, Ricci? Is that how you pronounce her name? I don't know. Um, her and... Uh, it's Johnny Depp, right? I'm pretty sure it's Johnny Depp. Because, yeah, he was doing, because he had done Edward Scissorhands, and so, yeah, he did Sleepy Hollow. Okay, so this is looking great. Very spooky. Very spooky, but kind of like with snow or something. It's looking a little wintry, but it's okay. It'll look fine. I really kind of don't care. Um, I wanted to do some mixed media and some painting and 
Um, I thought it would be nice to have like a piece of art in Terry's uh, journal, so. Ta-da, there it is. Okay, it's a tree. We could, you know, there's only two branches, right? We could do some like foreground branches, right? They come off like in the background. That will probably look good, right? Make that look like it's connected more, I think. Do, do. Like that. Have one going off, off, off the page like that, right? Okay, that's fine. I'm going to leave it alone. I don't know. What do you think? It looks okay. It looks okay. Rinse my brush really good. Um, so, let's go over some of this. Like, some of that white is showing through. We don't want that. All right, awesome. So another thing that I want to do, and while this is drying, we can prepare, is, let's see, is it this one? Is it this one? Yes. So I have these wooden, these like, they're not wooden. Are they wooden? They're chipboard. So I have these little chipboard keys, and so I'm going to grab maybe three of them and I might come back in here and try and find see if I can find little ch key charms we'll see um, but while this is preparing um, we're gonna paint these up and I'm thinking I want to do them in white um, that's I think what I want to do and so instead of using the acrylic I'm gonna use gesso I'm not gonna use my good watercolor brush uh, gesso can be, I don't know, gesso can really ruin brushes of all of the brushes I've ever had. Um, or, you know, played with different things. That gesso, I feel like, ruins more brushes that I have than anything else. But we're gonna just going to color these white. We might have to put a couple of layers on there, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about the sides. I kind of like the contrast of the dark. You get this kind of shadow, it makes it pop. So I'm just going to do the very top of the keys. The very top. Let's put a layer on there on each one, and then we'll go back over and do another, another layer. Just try to get an even layer anyway, so it's not too textured. I don't want to texture them really too much. I mean, it's going to happen probably because I am using gesso instead of acrylic paint, but um, gesso is stickier and less, I don't know, I feel like it would be less prone to warp the keys than like acrylic paint. But I think that uh, acrylic paint will work fine. Like red, because I mean, I think acrylic gesso, like is just acrylic paint. It's a thicker, I think, white acrylic paint kind of base, basically. Though, don't quote me on that. I don't know. That's what I've always assumed. I mean, they're both acrylic, right? I'm pretty sure gesso is kind of like a paint. Just a thick one. Okay. You know, I was thinking about it, and it might have been the clear gesso that me and Daniel were talking about that we had the same one of that wasn't good. I mean, this white gesso still isn't, I mean, look, any gesso works, and any gesso is better than no gesso. You don't have to have the most fancy supplies. Do you know what I mean? Like, 
I don't have the most fancy. I mean, I use stuff from 2004. <laughs> but, you know, in our dreams, you know, we all wish that we could have every single fancy supply we could ever. I tell you what I'm saving up for. Something fancy. That's what I'm saving up for. I'm saving up for something fancy. It's a Miss P recommendation, right? So Miss Paint-A-Lot, she has all these fancy supplies. And there's this particular one. Oh, that I love. And I'm going to get. So I'm super excited and can't wait to do that. That'll happen maybe in a, in a few weeks probably. So here's our, and we're, I want to hang keys off of this tree. Like this. This is what we're going to do. We're going to hang the keys off the tree. Um, I'm thinking though I want to go in. Is this dry? How dry? It could be a little drier. Okay, so we're more dry now. And I'm going to use my white pen. So I've tried a bunch of different white pens and I'm not happy with most of them. This one I got from the Dollar Tree. From the Dollar Tree for a dollar. It's called a metallic marker, but I don't see how it's metallic. It's a white. That's all. It's just white. I don't think it's me white metallic, but I don't know. I'm going to go in and kind of define this tree a little bit. We're going to put in some lines, right? Just going to scribble it all up in there. Just scribble it up. Let's put some kind of definition. I guess it does really look snowy, doesn't it? That kind of wasn't my intention. I wasn't going for winter. <laughs> oh, that's okay. We can grunge it up and make it look less wintry. Where is where did this branch go? Nowhere? I need to put take that branch to go anywhere? Oh well. We'll put some definition somewhere. It'll look fine. Looks like that went that way. That comes down this way. Onto this one. Right. Ooh, this is looking crazy. I'm not even sure. It's going to be what it's going to be, right? Mixed media is kind of like that. Sometimes it becomes its own kind of thing. Um. <laughs> I <laughs> kind of let it take its life as its own. I don't try to control it too much. I just let it, I just play and I put stuff on the page and it becomes what it becomes. Like, I'm just scribbling, really. That tape is kind of sticking up on the edge. Ooh, that's looking pretty... Tim Burton or something, huh? Actually, it's really cool. Okay, I have an idea. I have an idea. Um, and I don't know if it'll work. I'm not sure. Let's put some... Where is my embossing paste? Okay, I'm going to put some embossing paste on my dudes so that they don't get paint on them. Okay, so this acts kind of like a... It's like a water-resistant kind of thing. Um... It's embossing paste, but uh, I, you can use it to put, like, uh, prime your thing so that you don't get, right, so paint won't get on it or, it makes it, like, waterproof or ink proof or, I don't think it will withstand alcohol ink. But I think I've tested that, and it won't withstand alcohol ink. Some things will withstand alcohol ink, right? And then other things, alcohol ink, it just, alcohol ink still will not dye it. Um, however, you leave it soak long enough, I bet it would. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try to put like a bunch of my gold charms. I have a bunch of like really gold. They're antique gold, but I don't use the antique gold too much. I l use, uh, I like a little bit more coppery kind of color. And so I'm going to try to copper them up 
a little bit using that alcohol ink method that I've seen been going around. Okay, so we've primed our people so that they won't get all inked, hopefully. Hopefully, anyway. Okay, let's close this up. I have to be careful of the heat of that heat gun because it does melt that, like, it can curl up the, your washi tape and stuff. But that's pretty good. Okay, so um, we have... I want to get my gouaches out. Oh no, I didn't put the top on my glue. That's not good. I'm going to have to deal with that later. I already know. Oh, it's probably mad at me. and It's going to make me pay for it. <laughs> okay, black is what we want. We want our watercolor brush. Okay, so I just sprayed some water in my black here. Let's see. Yeah. Play nice. Come on. Mix, mix. It's all like chalky. The black, I noticed, tends to do that more than the others. When it dries, it tends to like not want to re, right, reactivate. I mean, it does. It will. It will. See, it is. It just um, takes a minute for the black as compared to the others. Okay. Let's grab a little bit more water. We want quite a bit. That looks good. Okay, let's go in. I don't know how this white pen is going to react to water. It may run, which is fine. I don't care if it does. But I'm going to put in mostly down here. I'm trying to get it to run, and it will. Okay. Let's tap that. smudge it in some places, right? We're just playing. I don't know. <laughs> just so it's not so stark white. It was very white, right? Look at that. That white pen does great with the water. It doesn't. I was worried that it would run with the water, but it's not. Looks good. Okay, so that's looking a little better. It's looking a little less, um, shall we say, wintry, a little more grungy. I mean, Winter happens in the steampunk world, too. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's go in and dab a little bit. Dab, dab. Get some little bit of rough texture. I don't know. 
How is that? Put some black spots on it. Use up that black that we have here. Right. That will probably help too with the snow effect, right? That it won't look so much like snow if we have black as well. Now I'm just fighting against it looking like winter at this point, huh? Yeah. Embrace it, I guess. Okay. Looking good, looking good. Wave that around a little bit. If, see if the paint kind of moves around. That might be cool. Yeah, look at that. That's cool. Let's move it this way. Let's wave it that way. It'll help it dry, too. <laughs> cool. Cool, cool. I like it. It's interesting. I think. I think so. Yeah, I like it. Looks good. Looks good. Okay, let's wait for it to dry and then we'll do our the next part, whatever that may be. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. Why not? Huh? Why not, I say? How does that look? I like the black better than the white, definitely. Okay. Yes, I think we will go with the black and we will just put the keys on there. That'll be fine. It will be fine. Let's use, let's see if our art glitter glue is all, it looks like it's okay. Let's put this one here. Like that. And then this one will go up in the corner, I think. keys and then one more right and it, it can go up here right here I'm thinking I think I got these from the Dollar Tree <laughs> they had these chipboard keys and I was like oh look at these they were so cool so I grabbed a packet of them so I'm happy to be using them Okay, so that needs to dry. And meanwhile, let's put the top on our glue. Look at my fingers. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. All that gesso and everything. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. This is why baby wipes are so wonderful. <laughs> okay. So, now I'm going to take my white pen. Right? I'm going to kind of... I'm going to draw like we're going to border it like this. Okay, 
And then we're gonna let that dry and grab a pen. Where's our pen? <clears throat> I'm gonna grab my Micron pen, my big one. What is it, an eight? We're gonna, again, border with the black. Well, hopefully it's okay. <laughs> hopefully it's an okay, right? I don't know, what do you think? I'm not sure it's very dark, huh? Dark and spooky. It's a dark and spooky winter night in the steampunk world. I suppose I could sign it, huh? My mother would be like, sign it. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's glue it in our book, shall we? And see how it looks. Let's glue it in our book. To page 10. Right like that. And how wonderful that it will be the middle too, right? Because it's page 10. So it's like it marks the very middle of our journey, of our page by page journey, right? Only 10 more pages to go. And then we're gonna make a cover. So, yep, we'll make a little cover to put it in and then we'll mail it off to her and hopefully she likes it. <laughs> I can't wait to get the one that she's making me. It's beautiful with all the flowers and everything. Okay. Let's see, hopefully we are somewhat even our black and white page. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Put a little bit of extra glue here down. There we go. It looks good. I like it. It's interesting. <laughs> it's art, I guess. <laughs> you call it that. I don't know. Um, fun, anyway. I had fun doing it. Um, that's, I think mixed media is about the process. So in the end, it is what it is. It's just about the process. until you get something, I don't know, that looks remotely like something, I guess. <laughs> but there it is, it's a tree, and um, it looks more wintry than I wanted, but it's okay. Page 10, I love it. We could put a stamp a number on there or something. Goodness. Let's put, and I know it's, it'll be weird, but let's put like a five. and a one and a four five one four like that and it will it'll just be numbers stamped onto the page where's my block there it is. yep there we go awesome I'll use my pigment ink, my black pigment ink, ink that I'm running out of. Gotta go get some more ink. More ink. You can never have enough ink. Oh. Okay. Oh, I feel like this is gonna go so terribly wrong. Let's try and get it as flat as we can. Shall we? Okay. I'm gonna press. Okay. 
ta da! One five, five one four. <laughs> one five. five one four. I don't know. It is a thing. So there it is, our page for today. I had fun. I love it. It's cool. I can't wait to see what the prompt for next week is going to be. Um, this one came out interesting. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much. I had so much fun today, and um, I hope you guys have a good day. Um, and the weekend's coming up, so have a good weekend. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!